welcome you guys to a new episode of BTM, the Basketball Time Machine, the podcast with former NBA players about former NBA players. But before we get to today's guest, just a little reminder, if you want to hear more podcasts like this one, just make sure you hit that subscribe button so you always get notified once we upload a new video. So let's see who's today's special guest. So today's guest is a former NBA player, but also competes in Ice Cube's Big Three League. Derek Bias, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sean. So the Big Three season is over for quite a while now. How much you miss playing? Yeah, yeah I miss it a lot. I mean, it's such a, an exciting product. It's such a, it's a good product that we put on for the fans and everything. And uh, just to be around the guys every week, to see uh, familiar faces and everything. It's a very exciting uh, summer season that we have. So I miss it a lot. Okay. So before we get into the big three, let's talk about your NBA journey. Uh, you were drafted by the Portland Trailblazers in 2007 in the second round, but it wasn't until 2011 when you had your first NBA game. I was wondering how tough is it being drafted, but not knowing if you ever get your shot in the NBA? Uh, it's a little difficult because everything is such a business. And when you're 23, and fresh out of school, you don't know too much about the business at the time. You rely on your agents for their their counsel and their experience and their advice. Uh, so you don't know a lot. You know, I went into uh, training camp with the Philadelphia 76ers when they acquired me from the Blazers. And, um, you know, they had like eight guys at my position under guaranteed contracts, which was something I was, you know, I really didn't know how that would factor into my chances to make the team. But it was a, a huge factor. And so, you know, due to a numbers game, I wasn't able to make the team initially. So, I, you know, I, I was always playing from a deficit, so to say, you know, trying to claw my way back into the NBA and get that taste again. So to answer your question, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, there's there's new players every season and it's a it's a journey. It's a it's a it's a hard journey if you don't crack uh, the league right away. Yeah, I can imagine. So you played in many European countries before you finally got your shot in the NBA with the Spurs. Uh, what were your expectations going into into your first NBA game? Uh, I didn't have any expectations at all, really. I mean, uh, actually, it came as quite a surprise because um, I believe it was on my birthday that San Antonio, uh, they, they called me in the middle of the night and they were like, hey, can you get on a plane <laughs> to come meet us to play a game? Yeah, wow. and so I literally was in bed uh, at my residence in Miami, and I hopped on an airplane and I played my game. And uh, so it was all just such a – it was a blur for me, but I tried to stay in the moment and just try to enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I didn't go out there saying, hey, I need to get this amount of minutes, this amount of points. I literally, you know, just uh, just wanted to enjoy the moment. All right. Quite a birthday present, man. Oh. <laughs> So uh, you played. <laughs> it was. So you played for Greg Popovich alongside um, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. Do you remember right. your first meeting with the guys? Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I had already been doing some workouts with the Spurs and years prior, so I had a chance to meet them through just kind of some unofficial workouts and things like that. You know, they're always coming in through the locker rooms, coming through the gym and things like that. And, you know, these are just unquestionably Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Fame players that uh, left a legacy with San Antonio. And, um, you know, just 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 genuinely good guys. There's no surprise to why uh, they had the success that they had and the Spurs had the success that they had. All right. Which Spurs player helped you the most? Uh... It would have to be between Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. Uh, those guys played at my position. And, you know, so I had to kind of go against those guys and practice and things like that. So um, I would say one of those, you know, one of those guys is it's between them two because they knew the system, even though Kawhi was a younger guy at the time. They really knew the system and they uh, – They, and and, and uh, I'm forgetting the name, James Anderson as well. All these guys played the same position as me, and um, they just kind of helped me along the way and just uh, made sure that my learning curve was was a lot shorter than it needed to be. Since you played in so many different countries, you had quite a few different coaches. How was it playing yeah. for Greg Popovich? Popovich? Uh, I mean, he's... 
he's uh, undoubtedly one of the best coaches of all time. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> it goes without saying that he'll be a Hall of Famer as well. You know, he's been with the Spurs organization since the 96. Uh, comparatively to other coaches, you know, it was just his his leadership. You know, he was somebody that you can turn to and you trusted him. You trusted that he knew what he was doing. There was never any doubt that, uh, um, that, you know, he knew what he had going on with the system and everything. And I think the most important thing that stood out was that he trusted his players as well. Um, you know, he, everybody had a role, even though mine wasn't a great, <laughs> like everybody had a role, whether it was showing up and competing in practice and things like that. So, um, you know, I was very grateful for the opportunity. Do you remember who you played first in your first game? Uh, Phoenix Suns. Yeah, Phoenix Suns. Is that Suns. a guess or is that an answer? It was, no, no, no. I, I would never forget. It was Phoenix Suns. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember who, who you had to guard? Um, Not really. Um, I remember Shannon Brown being out there. Guarded him a little bit. Um. Nah, I, I, you know, it was like I said, it was kind of, it was kind of a blur for me. I was just, uh, I was just happy to have my number called. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the big three. Uh, you played in both seasons. How did you get involved? How did I get involved? You know, I read about them in the news and what they were doing, and I just thought it was such an innovative idea to try to bring back nostalgia, pretty much. You know, bring back some of the older names from years past that could still play basketball. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't really know how it was going to do in the first season, but it took off. It was a hit. And uh, to answer your question, I got involved because I reached out to Roger Mason, who was a longtime friend of mine. Oh. He was the big three commissioner. He was the first person I reached out mm -hmm. to to try to be involved with it. And... Uh, He extended an invite for me to come, you know, come try out at the draft combine. I played well and I got drafted. And so okay. that's how that started. Who was the player you were most excited about? Uh, Allen Iverson. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> okay. Allen Iverson, man. Once I saw he was a part of it and pretty much his face, you know, carried the brand, I, I want to say, for that first season, you know, outside of Ice Cube. You know, he was just, uh, he was the most famous name already a Hall of Famer, and, um, you know, he was just somebody, when I was drafted to Philly, I was actually involved in the Allen Iverson trade from Philly to Denver. When he went to Denver, oh. they acquired uh, the rights to a draft pick. That draft pick ended up being me. So I, I was, uh, uh. you know, the funny thing is I never got a chance to be his teammate in Philly, and so it was, it was quite interesting how that came full circle, and I got you know, how I came back around. Okay. So you're going to be there the next season? Uh, I, I intend to. I plan to be there, yeah. I'd like to uh, try out again. Great, 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 great. Any special player you wish uh, who would join next year? Um, so far, I've only seen Lamar Odom. Uh, I've seen him, his name. He, he confirmed that he'd play, which... You know, we'll see what he has. I know he's he's had a couple of seasons off, but um, everything I hear about LO when he commits to, you know, getting his body back right and getting in shape, you know, uh, he's going to have that drive to get to where he wants to be. So it'll be interesting not only to see him out there on the court, but I mean, he's a he's a big name that uh, a lot of people will come out and want to see as well. I also heard Jason Terry was a name to, uh, oh, great. you know, keep a lookout for as well oh that, that would be awesome man great 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 so yeah i'm really looking forward to the season as i told you earlier i'm actually enjoying the big three even more than the current nba and uh so my season my <laughs> my basketball season starts in summer when you guys start playing yeah yeah <laughs> man fun. for real fun. yeah quite entertaining so before i let you go i have my my, my last question is always the same You're a top five ever, and you have to, you have to choose a point guard, a shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and a center. And you're allowed to have a sixth man. 
Ah, oh, man. Wow. You said, what about the six man? No, you I can't, can't have, have a six, six man. man. So my point guard has to be the great Magic Johnson. All right, you're allowed to stay on the podcast. Good. <laughs> the great Magic Johnson. Um, I guess the next position would be shooting guard. Man, this is a tough one. What? It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Are you serious? One. It's a tough one. Only because I'm trying to find a way to fit my favorite player of all time, Kobe Bryant, on here. But Okay, uh, but you're not going to do what I think you're going to do. No, it's pretty it's pretty much impossible when you have Mike right there. So I'm gonna go with Mike. Okay. All Mike right. Mike at the two guard. Uh can Kobe play small forward? Yeah, I was gonna say his last couple of years he played small forward, you know? So All right, there you go. <laughs> But then you got a guy named LeBron right there at the small forward. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's, it it really is tough. Uh that probably for me. Just to keep it simplified, you know, LeBron at the three, Tim Duncan at the four. All right. And I got to go with Shaq at the five. I did, I wasn't around Ooh. to see Bill Russell or Chamberlain <laughs> or Kareem, but the 2000 Lakers Shaq was enough for me to see. All right. All right. Your starting five is looking good. So who's your sixth <laughs> man? The great Kobe Bean Bryant. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> See, I found a way to fit him in. I found a way to get him in there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Well, thanks a lot. It was great to have you on the show. We're all looking forward to see you in the next season of Big Three. And you guys just make sure you, you keep it going. And hopefully the Big Three will grow and grow and grow. I hope so as well, man. Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it, son.